Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and we're going to be going over the Activate Game Object action in the Game Object subsection of Playmaker. Now, I've got the scene set up with an empty game object and a cube that we're going to be using for the purposes of this experiment. So let's add on the finite state machine and add in the game object action. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is it's going to give you the game object that you want to use. Now, you can use itself by leaving it as use owner, or you can pull the drop down to specify a game object. Now you can control this one of two ways. You can either manually drag and drop the object that you want to activate or deactivate in there, or you can control it with a game object variable. So let's add that in there. Like so. Now for the purposes of this experiment, let's just manually drag and drop. In the next few frames, the activate is a checkbox, which means that if you want to control it with a variable, it's a boolean. So, for example, let's deactivate it, and I'll show you what it does. Alright, so, as you can see right now, the game object is active in the scene, but as soon as we click play, it will go to this action, and it will fire it off. And as you'll see, it's disappeared. Now, this is a good way of controlling which uh, items in your scene are on screen at any given point in time. So say for example you have a vast, huge, huge screen and you only want to tell it to render what is visible to the player right now. As you, well basically if you've got like for example clipping planes or if you don't want it to render what you can't see, you can use this to control it like that. Now the next thing you'll see is recursive. What this basically means is if there are objects, for example let's create a few it's a sphere. Let's put that there. And let's drag that as a child in the stack. Now, with recursive set to checked, it will basically go through the object and any children that are parented to it and deactivate it. But if you turn off recursive, it will only handle the parent object. And it will disable it like so. And you can see that its action is reflected in here. See this little checkbox here? When we by default, it's set to active. Okay, so the next thing you're going to be looking at is the reset on exit. That basically means that if you want to control it so that an object is active or deactivated while this action is running, if you want to reset to the state that it was initially in when it entered into this state, that is what you would check. And of course, every frame, so if you wanted to do this every frame, or if you just want it to fire once you have that option. Now both recursive and activate are controlled by booleans, so let's look into that. Okay, and the next one... So, the state and whether or not children are going with it. Now if you notice, the activation state is false, but the recursive state is also false. So as you can expect, the cube should disappear, but the sphere should stay. Like so. Okay, so I hope that's answered a few questions you may have had about this particular action. And as always, if you like this video, feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Hope you have a great one.